The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one whom God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given everything over to Him. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the Son will not see life. But the rod of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday I commented on how we can obtain eternal life. And today we see that Jesus still speaks about eternal life. And obviously we obtain eternal life through Jesus, of His passion, death, and resurrection, we obtain eternal life and be with Him, like I said yesterday. Allow me to take you back a few years, when Pope St. John Paul II embarked on a journey to Chile in South America, before thousands of John hearts, he posed a series of thoughts, provoking questions about encountering Christ. He said, When we gaze upon Jesus, what do we see? Is he merely a wise man? A prophet, perhaps? But no, he's infinitely more. It's obviously that he is a prophet, but he's more than just a prophet. He is the prophet. He is God. In him, we discover the very face of God, the one who stepped into our human existence to share our joys and sorrows. Yes, my friends, Christ transcends all. He is God himself. And here is the remarkable truth. God places his trust in the youth, he calls upon us to embrace responsibility and give an account of our hope, for Jesus reigns supreme. He is God. The world thirsts for eternal life, so do we. But Christ does not merely offer life. He is life, the very essence of it. Today's Gospel echoes this eternal promise. Through Jesus alone, we attain everlasting life, the abounding life I spoke of yesterday's homily. But let us examine our words. Are they mere character or profound echoes of the gospel? Unfortunately, our dance often wound others, inflicting mortal bows with careless speech. Ye fear not. We are pilgriming on this early journey, our feet grounded in reality, but our eyes fixed on heaven. Our hope is vast, for it rests not in our own, but in Christ. With unwavering trust, we aspire to the eternal banquet with Christ himself awaits us. So my dear brothers and sisters, let, let our words be more than empty noise. Let them resonate with the hope that springs from faith. For in Christ we find not only life, but life abundant, a promise that transcends early limitations. What is hope? is a theological virtue by which we desire the kingdom of heaven and eternal life as our happiness 
placing our trust in Christ's promise and relying not on our own strength, but on the help of the grace of the Holy Spirit. We need to let ourselves be guided by the Holy Spirit. Let us be thankful for everything that the Lord does for us and in our lives and in our families. Let us, we may accept His message and let us be docile to the Holy Spirit so He can guide us to eternal life.